Hey guys, it's been quite a while since I made a video. Just been too busy at work and I um, haven't had the time to uh, really make a video, much less edit them. But this time around, uh, this is gonna be this video is gonna be part of a training um, for our new technicians. So we're not actually gonna be solving a problem, but we're actually looking at a working truck. All right. So why? What I have right here is a uh, diagram of the ignition module that the GM bypass system uses. Basically, the GM bypass system is when at startup, right? The the ECM is not in control of the spark timing. It is the ignition module that is control that is in control of the spark timing, right? At startup. Start up meaning less than 400 RPM. Once the speed reaches 400 RPM, then the ECM sends a bypass signal to the ignition module, right? And so it kind of activates an electronic relay inside the ignition module, which, which uh, switches over the control of that transistor directly to the ECM through this line right here which it says EST so that EST line once the engine reaches four, more than 400 RPM is going to be in control of the spark timing through that transistor so how does it get the RPM so it's going to be from the reluctor right from the reluctor and the distributor the AC signal coming up coming out of that reluctor would enter the ignition module and this would convert it into a square wave signal that it would pass through the ECM through the reference high circuit or line right here so the ECM is going to measure those pulses and once those pulses reach just 400 RPM then it's going to send a bypass signal a, like I said to the ignition module to transfer the control of that transistor to the ECM directly now what happens if for example you have a no start so on a standard system most of the time you say coil do the regular testing but there's one scenario We're using the bypass ignition system for GM that you need to check before you start playing around with the uh, ignition coils and all that other stuff because uh, remember I told you uh, I said earlier that the ignition module is in control at start up until it gets a bypass signal from the ECM it gets a bypass signal from the ECM right to transfer that spark control directly to the ECM. What I'm going to show you by using an oscilloscope is that that signal, the bypass signal should not be there at startup. And once you reach 400 RPM, that should give out a 5 volt signal to the ignition module. Okay, so I have uh, inserted a T-pin inside this. Uh, like I said, this is the ignition module within the distributor. So you have four wires and two wires on the other one, but it has letters. I don't know if I could see that. So I am, uh, my T-pin is inserted on the B slot. So if we look at the uh, schematic diagram, the B is for the bypass signal, all right? So I've taken out the line from the ignition coil to the top of the distributor and I just attach it to a spark tester so that we can prevent it from starting up so I'm gonna focus you now on the uh, oscilloscope so my settings is at channel 1 is at 5 volts right and time base is 1 millisecond so without without being able to start and reach 400 rpm my signal should stay at zero or at least close to zero and never go up to five volts 
And if I go up to 5 volts, I know if my electronic module is supposed to be, is working as it's supposed to, then I wouldn't have any spark. So I'll let you see right now while I crank it. Focus on the... Uh, so no change. No change whatsoever. Okay. Let's see some spark in there. Again. Okay, that should be a better view. Sorry about that. Okay, you see no spark. You see that the spark happens, so it's quite good. So now we know that if, for example, we had that spark, uh, we are missing that spark. First, check for that 5 volt signal because if that 5 volt signal is present on that wire, it would not give out any spark. That's for sure. So I'm, I'm going to put uh, the, uh, the plug back into the top of the uh, distributor and we're going to see once it starts up, what I'm expecting to see is that 5 volt signal be present on that wire still hooked up to the same pin still on the um, bypass signal wire so now when it starts up we should see that 5 volt signal being present see there it goes so once it was able to reach 400 rpm you can see right away that the 5 volt signal was present now and you know that the control of the spark is now transferred directly to the ECM. Okay, to uh, continue on. So what if you did the testing and you see there's no spark and you don't see that bypass signal going to the ignition module. So you're thinking, okay, well, maybe it's an input issue, right? Maybe the reluctor is not sending out a signal. So the one way I want to always want to do this is do a bypass test. So right now I have a uh, piercing probe connected to the P terminal, which is the green wire coming from the reluctor going into the ignition module. And what I'm going to do is I have my um, test light connected to battery positive. Make sure first that you have a good connection. The negative, so that's it. Good connection to the, my uh, battery positive. So when I key it on, oh, type. On. I'm gonna tap on my piercing probe and try to see if I have spark coming out of that spark plug. And if I do, then more likely than not, my ignition module, my coil, and everything else is gonna be fine, and it's gonna be the reluctor that I have an issue with. So let's try that right now. Key on. Focus you here. I'm gonna try to tap it. And as you can see right there, so once you send the signal to the ignition module, it's firing. So that would tell me that for sure I have a reluctant issue.